Right, Aaron, you're back in, back in the Bellator cage, back in the wing column. How valuable was that for you, the, the, the process of going through that defeat, coming through tonight, and getting a win, having showcased those new wrestling skills that you said you were working on during training camp? It sort of ticked all the boxes for you, right? Do you know, it was, I, didn't, I didn't really know what Fred was going to bring. I didn't know if he was going to stand and bang or... Oh, I, I, I just didn't know. I, I watched some of his fights and every fight was a bit different. So, we're just trained in every aspect. I know I've got the heavy hands. F fucking, I didn't hit, I didn't clip him much tonight. I, I, I remember I chased him a little bit for, for a, uh, I went a bit head hunting. And then I just thought, now nah, I'm going off the game plan, calm myself down and just really went back to everything I've been doing in the gym every day. And you know, it was nice to get back to winning ways. And yeah, show, show a little bit, a little bit what I've been working on in the gym. Um, I feel like the wrestling was strong. I feel like I, I outpowered him at times. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just nice to get back on the winning card because after the loss, I was I was debating like, like is the nerves gone? Like, can I walk out? And I seen like people walking out like James Gallagher and stuff like lapping it up, and I thought, fuck this. Everyone's here to see them, and everyone's here to see me. Put my hands up, and I just went for it. Once I got the reaction from the crowd when I walked out, the confidence was up, and I thought, fuck, I'm gonna enjoy myself. You moved camps, can you talk a little bit about that decision and, and how it's helped you maybe uh, being at a different different camp? I moved camps because, like I said, my girlfriend was from Brighton, I was training in Birmingham and I was living in Newcastle, so it was three different parts of the country, travelling travelling like 20-25 hours a week, so I thought generally there's a whole house in Newcastle, we've all lived there as a family. And I thought, instead of putting 25 hours on the road, maybe put them in the gym. So that, that's what I've done. And Birmingham was amazing. If it wasn't for Birmingham in the last Birmingham, I wouldn't be where I am. But it was time to, in this part of my career, I get a full-time coach who is on the phone every day telling us what I need to do, what I'm doing, and what, where I should be. So it wasn't anything to do with, apart from I just didn't want to travel anymore. That was it. It seems like it paid off because you looked a lot more relaxed in there. That's what I've been working on. Like, I, I'm my own biggest critic. I think the Newcastle fight, if you noticed, that was my hometown crowd and I couldn't even lift my head up walking out. I was, I, I kind of beat myself up before I even got in there. So I thought, fuck this, I'm just gonna put my hands up. And then when Sweet Caroline come on, I could tell him singing, I thought, right, this is it. This is my night. I took the song from Darren Till, but I don't think he'll mind that. So yeah, I, I, once, it, once it come on, I, I really enjoyed it. And like I say, I think, I think it's shown tonight. How did you feel coming out? Um, obviously, that, that was probably the biggest roar I heard all night for anyone coming out that down there tonight. So, and also you had your crew, your, your mates for you again. I think it was Charlotte yeah. and Sophie. Charlotte and Sophie. Yeah, sitting down there. I think we could hear them from outside. To be honest with you, they were really cheering for us. Does that really help motivate you? You know, you feel like you know you found your place at Bellator. Do you know what it is like? Any support, like any, I get a lot of people supporting us. I get a lot of people hating us. So to walk out and hear the roar, like you said. It just picked us up that little bit more. I was ready in the back, but once I heard the roar, then the crowd was like, once the crowd started singing Sweet Caroline, I thought, right, this is fucking my arena. And I went in there and I just, I done what I had trained for for, for 10 weeks and it, it's paid off. No, it really showed you know, your patience and um, your flying triangle, as you'd like to call it. I'm, I'm definitely taking the flying triangle. <laughs> Even though it wasn't, but I'll fuck, I'm taking it. We'll go over it. Yeah, I will, I will. Cheers, mate. Aaron, we just talked about the build-up. Um, we saw on your social media you've been doing uh, you did a part of your weight cut with uh, Paul Daly. You've been working out with a couple of other fighters. Do you think now that a lot of fighters have just said to you as a fighter and not a reality star turned fighter? Do you know what it is? I think probably 80% of the fighters see on the card have all wished as well. Like some, someone like Paul Daly, I think he's had nearly 60 fights. 60, yeah. And he said, Aaron, he said a year ago, I was, I, I'd done an interview about you and I said that you're the real deal. And everyone says he's not a real fighter, but like I said before, if you're not a real fighter, how can you be on six of the biggest cards in the UK? Because if you're not a real fighter, if you're not a real fighter, how can you be on Newcastle twice, sold me home, town arena out, London three times and Birmingham, but I'm not a real fighter, so. If I'm not a real fighter in Bellator, then what are these fighters that are calling us? Do you know what I mean? So I can never be accepted by certain members of MMA, but fuck it. That's why I get paid so well, do you know what I mean? What's the overall aim for you in MMA? You come into the sport late, obviously, and yeah, you know, you're learning on the job. You're very much, and, and doing it under the, under the bright lights as well. You know, it's very exposing for you having to go through these sort of formative fights yeah, under yeah. So, much, so much media scrutiny and fan scrutiny as well. So looking further down the line, what is it you want to ultimately achieve in this sport? I just want to achieve as much as I possibly can. Like, as much as I can, like I thought, I start, I'll have one fight, 
enjoyed it, had two, and then I thought, do you know what it is? I'm not looking at like, I'm, I'm looking at a good four or five years still. I'm, I'm 32, but I haven't got the miles on the clock of, of fighters that have been in the game 10 years, so my body feels good. That was another fight, a few little, a few little niggles, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not badly injured. So go back to the drawing board. We'll go again, and I'm gonna keep going and going until I'm happy. Will that be a title? Maybe not. Maybe not. Like there's people in the game that have been like 20, 20 years training. I've been in, the, in here too, but I will go until I've had a successful career as I, as I possibly can. And you said Italy might be the next stop for you. Is that right? Yeah, I, I heard Italy, um, and yeah, like I say, Italy. London, Newcastle, fucking Birmingham, Manchester, I don't care. Wherever they want me to fight, I'll fight. And is there an opponent on your radar at all? Anyone that you want? Fuck it, I've just walked out the cage, I don't know. <laughs> first things first is I'm gonna go to Egypt and then I'll let me, me management and me coach deal with the opponent and whoever it is, it is. I, I, like, I really don't, like everyone says, oh this, but whoever they pick, I will fight. When whether I get beat, whether I win, I, I don't care. When do you think you'll be ready to get back in there? I think it's October. Okay. October, then I've heard Newcastle in December. And this time I'll fucking blow the roof off the place. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, October there. Do you think maybe a couple of days before October, you, the Dublin card, you mentioned wanting to fight in Dublin. Is that something that's still on your radar? No. Uh, if Dublin was, I asked, and they told me that it would be Milan. Um, there's so many good fighters in Dublin that I think deserve to be on the card more than me. Mm. Um, so I think, as a home show, I think they should fill it with Dublin fighters, personally. Um, it's, it's, it's on the list. But for now, I think the Dublin fighter should should uh, should headline it all, and I'll be there supporting. And then two weeks later, I, I, I fight in Milan, I think. How much did the loss affect you, and how much was it playing on your mind going into this one? Well, I'd never lost before, so I didn't really know what to expect. It, it, it upset us because I thought I had let everyone down. I mean, it was my first loss, and it was my first loss in Newcastle, so it doesn't get any worse than that. And I felt like once I had lost, the pressure was off a bit. Like the build-up this week, I just felt nice and calm. I thought, I've lost now. So, what's the worst that can happen? You can only lose, and that was it. And yeah, it, it, it affected us, but it affected us in a good way because I've just got back to winning ways and showed a bit more an all, of an all-round game than, 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 I, than I was used to. How much, uh, how much did it mean to you to have your, your friends from the reality TV world come out again? You know, they, they've come pretty much all of your fights. Charlotte, obviously a very close friend of yours and a huge celebrity as well, come out and, and take her Saturday night and, and come to support you in, in your fight. Do you know, Charlotte, my mom, just everyone that comes, even people that just support supporters from Jory Shaw is anyone that supports us, it means the world to us, do you know what I mean? And like I say, when I hear the roar of the crowd, I, I, I must be doing something right, do you know what I mean? I hear a little bit of boos, but fuck them. The, the roar was better than the booing, so it's all good. Aaron, congratulations on a beautiful finish. Thank you. Are you a religious guy? Am I religious? Yes. I, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not. Yes, this is actually the Hinduism sign, so it's. It's a peace sign, isn't it? Is it peace? Yeah, yeah, peace, yeah, yeah, peace sign, yeah. It's also sad by the Hinduism. And uh, last thing, you said you could make a lot of money doing other things than MMA. So what brings you to the cage? Do you know, I had, I, had an, I had a TV career that was paying well, but it wasn't fulfilling me as a person. Like, after TV, if I had kept that up, then where would I go? And I always said to myself I wanted to do MMA, so it was getting to the point where I was getting 30 years old, and if I didn't transition then, then I would never have done it. So I transitioned, I put me all into it, and here we are, two years later, six fights in. And yeah, and just a, a try, fly and triangle on the court, so I'm good. <laughs> and, uh, after the fight, I, saw, um, I actually saw that uh, the Royce Grace actually stopped you and shook your hand and congratulated you on your submission. What was it like having legends like that to pay you dues and give you? Well, as soon as he said that was a good triangle, that's all I, that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> that's all, I, I think he was going to finish the combo, but I was just like, as soon as he says that was a good triangle, yeah, then. I yeah, I was fucking. The smile went from here to here, so. <laughs> It's you know it's nice that people like Gracie and Paul and MVP when I'm coming out. It's nice to get recognition. Like I say, I think when I first joined, a lot of people were saying that I shouldn't be here, which is fair enough. But two years later, I'm still putting the graft in, and I'm just doing everything I can to be a well-rounded MMA fighter. Do you feel like losing a fight was a big part of that? You know, because I remember us talking about this last week. I think losing a fight was the kick of the horse I needed. Otherwise, if I didn't lose, I think I would have kept on doing what I was doing. And thankfully, Corey Brown wasn't heavy-handed in the ground and pound. Otherwise, it could have been ten times worse. So I think the losing was the kick of the horse I needed to push us on to to go to the wrestling and, 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 and other things. Good. Good man. Oh, Where's my painting? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.